Your Excellencies, Lords, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2012 Chatham House Prize Award Dinner. This, as I think many of you know, is our most important evening of the year, and we're delighted to be hosting supporters and guests of the Institute, including members of our Council, of our panel of senior advisors, of our William Pitt Group, members of the government and the opposition, and also representatives of the diplomatic corps. Thank you all for coming to celebrate this Chatham House Prize dinner this evening. I'd like to thank our sponsors for the event, led by Shell, who've once again been so generous in enabling us to do justice to this special occasion. Each of our sponsors is recognized in the program, which you'll find on your tables. I hope you have the time to take through their messages of good wishes to the President and to uh, Sheikh Kandushi. The Chatham House Prize, now in its eighth year, is presented to the statesperson deemed by the members of the Royal Institute of International Affairs at Chatham House to have made the most significant contribution to the improvement of international relations in the previous year. Now, this is the first time that the prize has been awarded jointly to two individuals. At the start of each year, we ask our research directors, heads of programs, senior fellows at Chatham House to nominate an individual who they believe has had the most significant impact on international affairs and who they believe is a worthy winner of the prize for their uh, achievements in the previous year. This list of names is then reviewed by our three presidents, Lord Ashdown, Sir John Major, and Baroness Scotland, who agree upon a short list and put this forward to our members. I'd like to underscore that it is our members who choose the winner of the annual Chatham House Prize, a process which creates great anticipation amongst members of staff and our membership alike. I'm delighted, therefore, uh, that our members have voted to award the Chatham House Prize in 2012 jointly to President Monsef Marzouki, President of the Republic of Tunisia, and Sheikh Rashid Hanouchi, the leader of the Ennahda movement in Tunisia. Pre President Marzouki and Sheikh Hanouchi were nominated jointly for the successful compromises they undertook in 2011 at the height of the Arab awakenings. At that time, Tunisia was the first nation of the Arab uprisings to begin the long and difficult transition to democracy and the search for dignity. By working together, President Marzouki and Sheikh Hanouchi demonstrated a genuine spirit of cooperation to overcome significant differences and ideological divides in the country during those turbulent times. Tunisia held its first free election for a constituent assembly in October 2011. This brought to power a government led by the Islamist Ennahda movement, which won the election, and involving two secular parties, including the Congress for the Republic, led by Dr. Marzouki. With Monsef Marzouki having been elected as president by the constituent assembly, the coalition government is now working to complete its new constitution and to then hold parliamentary and presidential elections uh, in the summer of next year. While many challenges lie ahead in the political, social, and economic fields, President Marzouki and Sheikh Ghanouchi's collaborative actions in 2011 have given Tunisia the political platform from which to move forward to a more democratic and prosperous future. I very much hope you'll enjoy uh, this evening and the speeches that have come, the dinner that's in front of you, but right now, it's my very great pleasure to introduce His Royal Highness, the Duke of York, who will present the prize to President Marzouki and Sheikh Anucci. Thank you very much indeed. It's a great pleasure to be able to uh, be here this evening, particularly on behalf of Her Majesty, who has asked me to pass on and read the following message to you. I warmly congratulate President Marzouki and Sheikh Ghanoushi on being awarded this year's Chatham House Prize for their significant contribution to T T Tunisia's democratic transition. Members of the Royal Institute of International Affairs have chosen two worthy winners. And to that I would like to pass on and add my personal congratulations to both of you. Tunisia, I have had the pleasure of visiting on a couple of occasions, and I look forward to coming again. And without further ado, 
I have these two wonderful Pray silence for His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Monsef Mazuki, President of Tunisia. Your Royal Highness, the Duke of York, Dr. Robin Niblett, Director of Chatham House, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's great honor for me to be here today with you in this eminent and historical institute that has always been at the forefront of the debates on international politics. It's all the more significant that the ceremony is taking place in the UK, the birthplace of modern democracy and the very country that generously hosted many Tunisian opponents. Let me first thank all the guests for attending the ceremony and Chatham House member for their generous vote and let me extend my special thanks for Her Majesty the Queen as Chatham House patron and the signature of the scroll. Thank you all for this award that I take as an acknowledgement of the difficult battle the Tunisian people are fighting in order to build their democracy. Your kind and generous gesture is but a resounding tribute to the Tunisian martyrs and people struggle for freedoms and emancipation. As a human rights activist who once was persecuted and forced to exile for the defense of freedom, dignity, and equity, I came to learn that the price to be paid for the materialization of these noble objectives is certainly high, that the task, though painful and tenuous, is profoundly uplifting and rewarding. Today, Tunisia has just ushered into a new era where economic and political development, as well as the renewed commitment to the core values of openness, tolerance, and her work are its catchwords. Our resolve is stronger than ever, as we have actually succeeded in doing away with ferocious autocracy. We will, deep, we will deploy every effort to succeed in our democratic transition and make out of the Tunisian revolution, which heralded the Arab awakening, a truly positive and inspiring experience. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, while I profoundly treasure this precious token of gratitude and generosity, I sincerely wish further success for your, to your outstanding organization for its tremendous work in the service of freedom and peace, and express the hope that our endeavors will be up to the expectations you are placing in us and the recognition to which this auspicious ceremony testifies. It's with great honor that I accept this award as an encouragement to pursue the efforts to cement our relationship and as a significant contribution to bring our people together for a better future. In the name of all Tunisian women and men, I thank you so much for this award. Thank you. Pray silence for His Excellency Sheikh Rashid Kanushi, leader of the Enakhta Party. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of God, most merciful, blessings be open, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and other prophets, peace be open them all. Your Highness, the Duke of York, respected guests, friends, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all with the message of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you all. It is an honor to be here with you tonight and to receive this award. 
I dedicate this award to the Tunisian people, the youth, to all people who strive for justice and dignity around the world, and those who are struggling for freedom night and days. The world, a time when people have taken control of their destiny, a time when people are paying a heavy price for democracy and a time when the support of those able to positively assist is necessary, but also a time when new friendships are being born, built on mutual respect and understanding. I have always believed in the need for peaceful coexistence between East and West and the compatibility between Islam and modernity. I wrote in my prison, in my prison cell of the, of the broad common ground that exists between all mankind. My life in the UK, which gave me refuge for 20 years, strengthened these convictions. There is a verse in the Quran which states, O oh people, we created you, O oh people, we created you from a male and female and made you into nations and tribals so that you may know one another. The friendships I made with open mind individuals, including at the Chatham House conference 18 years ago, strengthened my belief in, in the co cooperation or coexistence between cultures rather than a clash of civilizations. I also congratulated my friend Dr. Mousouf Marzouki, our president, whose intellectual and practical contribution has been so valuable to coalition the coalition of government realizes our shared belief in the need to work together with all who share the aspirations of justice and dignity. He too, too has sacrificed for his country and I am, I am no, I am honored to share this prize with him. This, this hall is the bright place of British democracy. We hope our country will also the birthplace of new aspiration of democracy in the Muslim and Arab world. Thank you, and we look forward to welcoming you in Tunisia, which is a very beautiful country, and where, and it will be, and it is nicer than before without dictatorship. Thank you. President, President Marcuzzi, Sheikh Hanusi, Your Excellencies, my Lords, ladies and gentlemen, pray silence for Mr. Andrew Brown, Director, Upstream International, Royal Dutch Shell. Thank you. Your, Ex <laughs> Your Excellencies, Lords, ladies and gentlemen, Shell is proud that has been the lead sponsor of this annual event since its inception. An award the statesperson deemed by the Chatham House members
to have made the most significant contribution to the improvement of international relations in the previous year. Tunisia can trace its history back for more than 3,000 years. This civilization has always played a leading role, benefiting from its strategic position in North Africa and on the Mediterranean Sea. It has been remarkable to observe how rapidly this country has changed from one regime to the current government through the successful democratic elections last October. This change has been achieved due to the stability provided by an effective administration. This strong foundation has allowed for significant political issues to be played out without the country dis disintegrating into chaos. Of course, the process is far from over and the constitution has yet to be finalized. But we wish Tunisia continuing to success at finding workable compromises to move the transition forward. Shell is proud to have been involved in Tunisia for over 90 years. Since the 1920s, we've supplied Tunisia with fuels and lubricants. Actually, 20 years ago, we partnered with ETAP in the development of the offshore Tizerka field, where we developed a global technology first by installing the first converted oil tank of floating production storage and offloading facility a technology now widely used throughout the world, and actually also here in the UK. But today, we at Shell are pleased that we renew our commitment to Tunisia. And currently, we're discussing with the Tunisian government to pursue exploration opportunities that are opened up, we hope to open up a new chapter in the Tunisian hydrocarbon industry for the benefit of its people. It's therefore a great honor for Shell to support the award of the Chatham House Prize for 2012 to His Excellency Dr. Mazuki, the President of Tunisia, and Sheikh Ganoushi, the head of the Anhada movement. In recognition of their achievements for driving Tunisia through its democratic transition following the revolution in January last year. Together, they have ensured that Tunisia is at the forefront of the democratic wave that has swept the Middle East and North Africa following on in the rich tradition of their nation and forming a foundation for their people's future, but also a foundation for economic growth, for foreign investment and for employment. Thank you. Pray silence for Mr. Alistair Burt, Member of Parliament for North East Bedfordshire and Under Secretary of State at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, Minister for North Africa. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, uh, President Marzuki and Sheikh Ganoushi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real honour to be here this evening as we congratulate President Marzuki and Sheikh Ganoushi on winning the 2012 Chatham House Prize. Their being chosen is testament to the crucial role they have played in steering Tunisia towards democracy and freedom. It's also a celebration of the country's diversity of opinion, a reflection of the remarkable capacity for discussion and debate in the new Tunisia. The task for Tunisia's political leaders is, in many respects, daunting rebuilding a political system, rebuilding an economy, rebuilding trust after decades of dictatorship and repression will inevitably take time. That can be a difficult message to convey today. We live in a world that expects instant results, one in which quick fixes can be more attractive than lasting solutions. In Tunisia, the contrast between the government's capacity to deliver quickly and the high expectations of Tunisian people is a huge challenge. I well remember being in the Maghreb area quite recently and speaking to a newly elected minister in another country and him saying to me with some degree of puzzlement that on being elected, he found that his electorate expected him to change the country within 48 hours. I sympathized but said, 
he was very lucky to have 48 hours. In this country, we're used to 24, or rather less. But despite differences of opinion between political parties, which we are well used to here, and even differences within political parties, which we are even more used to here, Tunisia's leaders are demonstrating determination and a crucial willingness to compromise as they work towards Tunisia's first democratically drafted constitution. And while frustration at the pace of change is understandable, we should not let it cloud what has been achieved. In October last year, we watched Tunisians vote for the first time in free and fair elections. We have seen the emergence of a vibrant civil society, and we've looked on as Tunisians have embraced their newfound freedom of expression. Countries like the United Kingdom are standing at your side at this time. Over the decades before the Arab Spring, Britain welcomed Tunisians who had fled their country for fear of persecution, Sheikh Ganoushi amongst them. And since the events triggered by the death of Mohamed Bouazizi, we have supported and will continue to support Tunisia as it rebuilds through our Arab partnership program, through our work with the European Union and with international financial institutions, and next year through our G8 presidency. Since the Foreign Secretary's visit last February, we've been privileged to work with you in Tunisia in ways we could not have imagined before. We're delighted to have been able to support your historic elections and the building and reform of institutions. We will continue to be guided by what it is you need as we seek to support you further. Tunisians risked their lives in the revolution of 2011 to bring about change. Those now acting in their name have a heavy responsibility to set out the political framework for generations to come. The challenges will be constant but the importance of meeting them cannot be overstated. Tunisia's leaders will, no doubt, work to agree a constitution which serves everyone, ensure a truly inclusive political system, deliver an impartial rule of law, take forward transitional justice in a way which has the confidence of the population, repair Tunisia's economy, and cement the freedom of expression so hard won in a way that is irreversible. These are immense tasks. As a fellow politician, I know all too well how difficult it can be to navigate the bumps in the road and make lasting change. But the achievements you have made so far give us all confidence that remarkable progress is being made. Tunisia has already triggered change across the Arab world. If you can build on these achievements, you will again be an inspiration to others struggling for freedom across the region. President Marzouki's work on the Maghreb Union can help expand the economic prospects of Tunisia's neighbors. Sheikh Ghanoushi's articulation of the compatibility of democracy and Islam can influence those who believe that democracy cannot thrive in the Islamic world or that true Islam should mean a rejection of democratic rights. Mr. President, you spoke earlier uh, of your hope that the endeavors of the Tunisian people would match the ambition of the award tonight we are confident that that hope is well placed. Ladies and gentlemen, our Chatham House prize winners have shown that progress in a democracy requires acceptance of difference. It is that spirit of reaching out across political divides that we celebrate tonight. Thank you very much. A silence for the Right Honourable, the Baroness Scotland, co-president of Chatham House. Your Excellencies, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, friends. Firstly, can I say how pleased and proud I am to be able to speak on behalf of my fellow co-presidents. And just in case you think they are silent, of course we have the Right Honourable John Major, and my former president, the Noble Lord, Lord Robertson. I am tonight their brief. So firstly, my lords, may I uh, add my voice to all of those who have rightly congratulated the president 
and Sheikh Ghanoussi on their well-deserved award. The president isn't only receiving our award tonight, because many of you will know that he has also been named number two in the top 100 global thinkers of our world, second only to Aung San Suu Kyi. I can only say how happy I am that a woman of such sterling merit goes before him. Now, my lords, the Arab Spring, as it has come to be known, started, as we all knew, know, in Tunisia. It spoke of the aspiration of a people long denied the proper access to the rule of law and a sincere thirst for change where an individual would be judged not by his political, religious, or other affiliation, but by his own personal merits and attributes, where fairness and parity of treatment could be assured for all, irrespective of gender, where industry and hard work could be ma matched by fair opportunity, and where young people of the region could be confident that their talents would not only be recognized, but be used to the full to build a strong and vibrant economy from which all would benefit. It was an aspiration, not just felt by the peoples of Tunisia, but echoed across North Africa. The formation of a coalition government under the presidency of President Mazuki gave birth to an historic alliance, which as the Sheikh has rightly said today, led to reconciliation between former rivals and gave hope to a whole region. With that hope, as Alistair has already made plain, has come the heavy burden of expectation and responsibility to deliver real, quantifiable change. The thirst for peace, parity of treatment, economic stability, and fulfillment of opportunity for the young remains unsated. Many challenges remain to be conquered, and the trust which has rightly been placed in the leadership represented by our two award winners tonight not only for the people of Tunisia, but also by the whole region, I am sure will not be misplaced. We all know that the journey to democratic and constitutional stability is never an easy one, and the period of transition is always precarious. I hope that both the President and Sheikh Junusi will, as a result of their time with us here, know how warmly their success is wished for and how anxious we all are to do all we reasonably can to make that success more possible. Speaking entirely personally, I hope that the women and girls of Tunisia will be encouraged to add their shoulders to the wheel of change their talent and entrepreneurial skill will be much needed in the years to come and I'm sure will lighten the load of the men and bring them much needed wisdom. So may I thank both the President and Sheikh Shanusi for what you have done in order to bring democracy to Tunisia. And I want to thank you in advance not just for the things you've done in the past, but all the things that you will do in the future to make sure that democracy is deepened and embedded into the day-to-day -day lives of the men and women of Tunisia, so that their dreams for freedom and a country true to its very best values becomes a reality which is tasted and felt and experienced by all 
equally. We give you our heartfelt thanks, together with our heartfelt congratulations for a job well done, but not finished. Thank you very much. Pray silence for Mr. Stuart Popham, Chairman, Chatham House. President Mazuki, Sheikh Kanushi, Your Excellencies, honoured guests, members of Chatham House, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, you may be reassured to know that I am in fact the last speaker of the evening. Uh, you may be still further reassured that through the omission to remember my reading glasses, this will be a short speech. But what I would like to do is to offer further congratulations to our most worthy winners of the Chatham House Prize for 2012. I think all that we have heard this evening, so optimistic, so upbeat, confirms my view as to the significance of our prize winners' actions in Tunisia, but more to the point, the impact that those actions have throughout a much wider audience. We really are all most grateful to them to have made the journey here this evening to receive their award. And in turn, I believe that then means it's for us to consider what we can do to help them ensure the continuing success of their actions and of all the change that they have made. May I also, though, take this opportunity to thank our sponsors for this evening especially our lead sponsor, Shell, and in particular to Andrew Brown. For our sponsors, Petrofac, and for the supporting sponsors, Bloomberg, BP, and British American Tobacco. Thank you to our co-presidents at Chatham House here tonight, Baroness Scotland and Sir John Major. To Ambassador Chris O'Connor and his team in Tunisia for their help, for their assistance, during the preparation for this evening's events. And I think I really should mention the staff of the Banqueting House, to Simon Liebel for being responsible for such amazing surroundings and the excellent food this evening. Within Chatham House, Camilla Seymour, Linda Bedford, and Lindsay Cox, who've done so much to organize this evening, and a personal thanks to Robin Niblett. But most importantly, can I thank each and every one of you. Chatham House depends upon your support, and we really are most grateful for your support this year, and would ask you to support us again next year. But please, please do find opportunities to join with us on other occasions and to participate in what Chatham House does. So with that, let me wish you all a safe, and I hope dry journey uh, home this evening, and to say thank you and good night.